Westfield. Alien Trilogy arrived as something of a peculiar movie tie-in. It first released in February of 1996, almost four years after the movie Alien 3, and 10 years after Aliens, and 17 years after Alien. It was not the traditional timely release rushed to market to capitalise an interest in the film or films it was based on. The fact Alien Trilogy arrived even later on Saturn and PC? Well, no, this wasn't a quick and easy cash-in. The game was developed in a swift 15 months by Probe Entertainment, the studio behind plenty of licensed games, including Judge Dredd, Batman Forever, Die Hard Trilogy, and, well, Alien 3, as well as notable ports such as Mortal Kombat, Smash TV, and Road Rash's 8-bit versions. And so it was a dependable team, a sizable chunk of hype, and a new console generation coalesced into the perfect storm. When the original PlayStation released in the West, September of 95, Alien Trilogy was up there on many a most wanted list. Especially mine. According to a piece I read in the short-lived, thoroughly excellent Maximum magazine, Alien Trilogy was initially intended for the Mega CD, then 3DO, and then the 32X before making its move to the PS1. And while Doom, itself releasing on PS1 late in 1995, was still much loved, it was also seen as a bit of an older game. And, well, it, it was, originally releasing in 1993. Probe's Alien Trilogy would be a new generation of Doom clone, made specifically for the new generation, and able to take full advantage of all that came with Sony's new machine. It would also see Probe getting full access to Fox's archives from the three movies the game was based on, with the movie studio remaining surprisingly hands-off throughout the project. As Alien Trilogy's game designer Matthew Nagy told Retro Gamer in a feature for issue 95 of the magazine, I never had to get approvals from Fox. Unlike Die Hard Trilogy, Fox was very hands-off with Alien Trilogy because, unlike that first project, they were the co-publisher. On Alien, the licensing went through a claim, and Fox dealt with them rather than Probe directly. So it was left in Probe's hands, watch the films, get the feel, and turn it into a game that could carry the Alien license. Our job was really to translate the art from one medium to another, Ben McGrath, artist on the game, told Retro Gamer. We sat there with VCRs and went through the films, taking screenshots of every set design, logo, weapon, and so on. I must have watched all three films frame by frame multiple times. And along with this attention to detail came the obligatory mega-hype technology to make ears perk up and force people to pay attention. Motion capture. In the mid-90s, this technique was already doing the rounds, but wasn't broadly implemented. Acclaim, Alien Trilogy's publisher, made a big noise about its new subsidiary, Acclaim Technologies Group, which included a full motion capture suite and made the studio among the first game companies, maybe the first, to have in-house motion capture facilities. This boastful hype focused on the claims of realism in the game's animations, how it would bring a new level of terror to facing off against the perfect organism of murder death. Thus, it all came together. The hype, the attention to detail, the bit more hype, the some more hype. Safe to say there were many reasons why I ended up taking a day off school, pretending to be ill no less, to play Alien Trilogy when it came out. And what was the result of this special mix? The hype, the amazing movies it was based on, the experienced dev team making it, the motion capture technology, the bit more hype, the new generation of consoles, the game that was like Doom but made specifically for modern machines. What did we end up with? Well, it was a Doom clone. A Doom clone that evokes countless warm memories in me, but a Doom clone nonetheless. It was key and door, or battery and switch really, based stuff with the player navigating around sprawling samey corridors in your typical maze-based design. You'd fumble your way in the dark blasting facehuggers and xenomorphs with a selection of weapons straight from the movies, though mainly aliens for obvious reasons. You'd shoot a lot of crates, turn on lights, jump out your skin as some knobby little creature from the mind of HR Giga jumped upon your face, though they didn't immediately kill you as they maybe should have, instead just doing a couple of points of health damage. Wee bit of a step down from how dangerous facehuggers should be, but hey, 
Mixing things up from the traditional Doom design, in which you'd just have to get to the exit, Alien Trilogy threw in some different mission objectives. Usually flicking switches or finding ID cards or maybe killing a certain percentage of aliens in a level, they offered a detour along your path to the exit, which you would still have to get to, of course. They would also offer the ability to fail, miss the switches you need to flick, kill too few Xenos, generally not do the thing you were meant to, and you would be met with failure. And then you'd have to do the entire level again. It wasn't exactly a delicate system, but it did at least mark a bit of a change to the usual way of things. Other than that, you were wrestling those mazes full of confusing layouts and requiring lots of automap referencing, and the need to battle your way through aliens and people and synthetics, oh my. Ammo was scarce, the pistol, while it never actually ran out of bullets, was a big pile of shit against most enemies, and... Well, yeah, I cheated to capture most of this footage, because who has time for this sort of irritating difficulty in erratic enemy movement? And your reward for finishing each of the three sections of the trilogy? A fight against a queen in her lair, of course. This big Bertha would put up a hell of a fight, or just take a lot of punishment depending on how you looked at it. Thing is, as I just said, I was cheating, so you could always just do this for a laugh. Ah well. Let's step back to the much vaunted motion capture for a second though. You may have seen from the footage so far that the in-game animation was not particularly special. In fact, the Xenomorphs moved like janky idiots, frankly. This was not the future of animation acclaim had promised us, surprising given the studio was well known for being so very straight up and honest its entire lifetime. Ahem. But as it turns out, the bleating about motion capture was related entirely to the production of Alien Trilogy's pre-rendered full motion video segments that being mostly the game's admittedly incredible intro sequence. Maybe it was Porky Pies by acclaim. Maybe some PRs got a bit over-enthusiastic and mixed up what was the studio's filmic ambitions with what was going on in the game proper. Whatever the case, one thing becomes apparent from acclaim technology group's dalliance with motion capture, the FMVs were made entirely separately from the main game. And that explains something. See? Plenty about Alien Trilogy made no sense. Ripley, rather than a space trucker warrant officer who could operate forklift trucks of the future, was turned into a literal colonial marine. Rather than making it her life's work to eliminate the Xenomorph, in no small part to keep it out of the hands of the company, in the game she was working to aid the company in its attempts to recover the alien, its efforts to take samples, and its drive to cover up alien infestations. While Ripley only goes ballistic in more ways than one in the movie Aliens, the game saw her heavily armed and blasting any and all in her way, including many humans, from the outset. Plus, in those FMVs, the handful in the game as a whole, Ripley made comments alluding to the fact she was trying to stop the Xenomorphs, and so was working against the wishes of the company, and not working for them as the mission objective stated. Now it's time to finish it. Once Contradictory, twisting the entire motivation of the film series' main character, Alien Trilogy just made no sense. And it was because of those FMVs. They were made by Acclaim's motion capture unit in the US rather than by Probe in the UK. Alien Trilogy, the FMVs, was made separately from and much earlier than Alien Trilogy, the bit you played. Looking at a pre-release feature covering the game in PlayStation Plus magazine, it seems Probe's original plan was to have the player take on the role as a no-name colonial marine. That explains the weapons, the missions, the fact the player was working on behalf of the company's wishes rather than acting how Ripley would in the situation. But then, and I'm extrapolating a bit here, Probe gets the FMVs, the expensive, much-hyped productions Acclaim has put together using its exciting new technology. They've had a lot put into them, and they have to be used. These FMVs also make it very clear the game's main character is Ellen Ripley, albeit with weird spindly arms. So it is, things go from playing as a faceless marine to taking on the role of Ripley as she does a hell of a lot of things Ripley would never ever do. 
And that's without even questioning why things happen out of trilogy order. It goes Aliens, Alien 3, Alien, and why everything from the three movies takes place on one planet, with Fury 161 not showing up at all. Still, that's what you get when a project's made with little interaction between those actually making it and the license holder in 15 months and is based on a trilogy of films that range from a bit old to practically ancient. Alien Trilogy wasn't the first game to take liberties with the plot of the film or films it was based on, but at least it had a vaguely interesting reason as to why, at, at least for some of it. All of this though, and all of this talk on my part, led to one thing. A game. A game I remember fondly, that I skived off school to play, that fills me with a warm nostalgia I only get from certain special things, and something that triggers people of a certain age to lyrically wax about its many positive aspects. Even though, frankly, Alien Trilogy has aged quite poorly, and honestly wasn't all that great to begin with. Compared to the gold standard, Doom, it was plodding in its pace, it was confusingly set up, it was often quite boring when it wasn't being confusing, and the difficulty was all over the place. But it had some things going for it, things that did more than just keep the game's head above the water. First up was the atmosphere, the filmicness Alien Trilogy brought, not just to the game itself, but gaming as a whole, cannot be understated. That attention to detail the artist went for shone through, with the world of the game thoroughly recognisable as that of Wayland yutani colonial marines, mysterious bone ships, and more. And while the darkness that filled the game's levels was a technical limitation of the day, helping to stave off slowdown as the console didn't have to render as much of the environment, it also worked superbly to help create that foreboding you needed from a series that relied so heavily on keeping things tense on making you worry or panic, and definitely making you jump. Then there was the fact that, simply put, this was alien. People had enjoyed a profound love of the franchise for a long time, and anything with the alien branding on it at this point was gonna go down well regardless. The fact that around the time of Alien Trilogy's launch there was much discussion of the then-unknown Alien 4, later released as the best 6 out of 10 film ever, Alien Resurrection, can only have helped too. And then, stepping aside from the Alien license, there was the fact that Alien Trilogy released at an opportune time. Just five or six months since the PS1 had launched, outside of Japan at least, meaning the game was able to take advantage of the slim pickings on offer for the console as a whole. Everyone already had Doom and loved it, but while Alien Trilogy was very much a Doom clone, it did enough of its own thing and leveraged that license and atmosphere enough to make itself a nice accompaniment to id's masterpiece. None of this is to say Alien Trilogy was a bad game. As I said, it was never that great, but it wasn't bad at all. It was engaging and nailed the mood of things, it was reverent of the source material, even if it wasn't reverent of its own in-game storyline, and it was nowhere near as bad as some of the movie tie-in games that even Probe itself had made, and would go on to make. It's just that, without the specific context Alien Trilogy released in, I'm not sure it would have done quite as well, and have gone down in history quite as positively as it did. Interestingly, and I use that word in its truest sense, Alien Trilogy never saw a sequel. A game based on Alien Resurrection released in the year 2000, three years after the film it was based on, but Probe's successful foray into the world of trilogy gamifying, technical term, didn't see any follow-up. And, weirdly for video games and their money-hungry ways, that was the plan from the outset. As Ben McGrath told Retrogamer, it was well known during development that the license would expire shortly after we'd released the game, so a sequel was never really considered. In hindsight, it would have made a lot of sense for the same core team to carry on making FPS games, but back then every game you made was in a different genre. We all got split up and went to work on Probe's other projects. So there was no sequel. But what was the legacy of Alien Trilogy? Well. It hasn't gone down as a template to which developers compare their FPSs, but it does rest easily in the limited ranks of games based on films that had something genuine, something good going for them. 
My attitude through the project was to refrain from using the movies as a crappy skin that could fit over a platform game, but to try and tailor the game's genre and gameplay to match the films effectively, Matthew Nagy told RetroGamer. Then I wanted us to borrow as much as we could from the movies to create unique gameplay mechanics that not only suited the license, but would deliver great entertainment value to the player. Alien Trilogy wasn't perfect, not by a long shot, but it definitely delivered great entertainment value. Something something coming out of the goddamn walls. Thanks for watching and thanks to my Fiverr and above tier patrons on Patreon. You can join them coming out of the goddamn walls, there's a link below, and get a wonderful silent shout out like this. And thanks coming out of the goddamn walls to my higher tier patrons who you can also join and get an audible shout out like this. Paintball Magazine PBM coming out of the goddamn walls. Lola Osman coming out of the goddamn walls. Takara Hoshi coming out of the goddamn walls. I'm off to come out the goddamn walls, then root out Alien Resurrection and think about doing a video on that, both the game and the movie. One underrated, one overlooked, both with a stupid end boss scenario. Goddamn walls. Bye!